Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come to our prayers of penitence. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, 
They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be an acceptable offering in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Happy Easter to you all. It's difficult to pass on those Easter greetings. They sound a bit hollow this year because we are separated. But our Easter story has at its heart hope. Hope for the future. In this account from John, we are asked the question, where's the body? Where's the body? Mary Magdalene is too attached to the physical body of our Lord Jesus Christ and questions where is his body, that I may go with him. But we who live after the resurrection, we who know the end of the story about Jesus' victory, know the answer to where is the body. The body is here. It's where you are. It's where every Christian is. For we are the body of Christ. We are the gathered church when we're together, but we are his body wherever we find ourselves. And we are bearers of it, resurrection hope, wherever we are. We see in Mary anxiety. Anxiety about many things. But Jesus says to her and to us, Come to me, put your burdens down. Take upon you my yoke, for it is easy. I will give you rest. We can rest our worry and our anxiety in Jesus' safe hands, knowing that our hope is secure. Jesus has won the victory. Our eternal home is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in eternity, in joy, in abundant life. That's where we're headed. We're heading home to be with God, our Father, together with Jesus, his Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. God loves each one of us and sent his only Son that we might be forgiven and brought home. For we are the Easter people who believe in the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the new eternal life with all the saints in glory. So this Easter, Recall that hope, experience that joy, and live that abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We join together to profess our creed, the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let's pray in our cycle of prayer for Reverend Janice Honey Morgan, Seagoing Chaplain, for the Reverend Raphael Duckett, Base Chaplain, Reverend Matt Godfrey of Frost, Reverend Robert Jones, OCM, for 4 7 Commando Raiding Group and their Commanding Officer, Colonel Chris Hall, for HMS Albion, for Carers, the Naval Service Family and People Service, for DCMH, 
Safa, Derivate Hospital, for all our doctors and dentists. Bless those we have named, O Lord. Strengthen them in your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this difficult time in our nation's life, Lord, we pray for our Queen Elizabeth, for her Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. In particular, we ask for your blessing and healing upon him as he leads our nation. We pray for members of Parliament, for all those in local government, that we may be justly governed for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those suffering in mind and body and spirit at this time. In particular, we pray for all those suffering from COVID-19. Grant them healing and strengthening, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those seeking to tend the care of our loved ones. We pray for all the doctors, for nurses, consultants and specialists, for the cleaning staff, for the hall porters, Lord, for pharmacists, for everyone seeking to pull a special national effort at this time to bring about the healing of others. Bless them, we pray. Keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Naval College. O oh, eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us, thy servants, and the fleet in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and of the air and from the violence of the enemy, that we may be a safeguard unto our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and her dominion, and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasion, that the inhabitants of our islands and commonwealth may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that we may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land with the fruits of our labours, and with a thankful remembrance of thy mercies, to praise and glorify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now this Easter, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. 